sewing friends. Happy April. April is so full of sewing challenges and I'm super excited to get involved. So I've got some fabrics here and some ideas to discuss. Um, yeah, there's three challenges that I am going to be focusing on this month. Um, and that's going to be like the majority of my making this month. Now I'm not going to make up this whole stack of fabrics. They're just kind of some ideas to share with you and kind of some help me whittle down the direction that I am looking at. I'm really excited for this month. I had major FOMO last month with um, the Sew Frugal Challenge, which is all about using a free pattern and fabric from your stash. And then Sew Yellow for Endo, which is about raising awareness and money for endometriosis research. So I loved watching the sewing community like participate in those, um, especially Sew Yellow for Endo. Um, that was really wonderful and they raised quite a bit. So great job to the host of those. That was really, really cool to watch. And yeah, so bummed that I didn't um, get to participate this time, but you can't win them all. You can't uh, do every single thing. But this month I am, I had kind of decided that I wasn't going to do sewing plans at all and just focus on doing the design your wardrobe um, class that I'm doing with Seamwork right now, which has been really fun. But as I was doing that, I was kind of thinking like, oh, some of these things like kind of align with where I'm going for that. So I decided to just go for it and I am going to talk about my plans for uh, so April blouse. So got some blouse fabrics and patterns to chat about. Also, so recreate the look. Um, that's always a really, really fun one. And then uh, selfless. So April. So I'm going to be doing some little makes for my kiddo. So I've got, uh, yeah, a whole stack to share with you. So first up is so April blouse. So the rules for this one are basically sew a woven blouse during the month of April. So pretty clear, pretty simple. Um, I will put links to all of the um, challenge announcements and as well as the hosts down below so you can check out all the details because I'm definitely, I could have like taken some notes and given you all of the details, but it's probably just easier for you. It's easier for me and it's probably easier for you to just like go click the link below and you can read all about it if it's something that you're interested in. So, um, yeah, the main rule here is that it is asking for woven blouses. Um, so that's going to be tops. And yeah, I think there are some specifications in a blog that either just got posted or is coming this week. But I'm honestly like overall, I'm not in it to win it like in any of these challenges. Um, I think these sewing challenges really serve as a great like direction point. I definitely like, I'm currently overwhelmed with my own plans, my own fabric stash, all of the patterns that I want to make. Cause I want to make everything right now, right this second. And obviously like that's not possible. So prioritizing can be tricky for me. So I kind of like leaning into these sewing challenges as like, yeah, a nice direction for my own making. And also it's a great opportunity to get involved with the sewing community and maybe like find some new people to follow. Um, yeah, I think it's really great for meeting new sewists and yeah. So I'm going with woven tops as my definition of a blouse. They may have some more specific rules, but I, I, I guess I'm not going to go for anything like super traditional as far as like, I'm not going to go into shirt making, but the three blouses that I'm looking at are like, I feel pretty much traditionally fit in that category. So first up, I have the Wren blouse from Chalk and Notch. Um, so this one I've talked about a little bit before. I have this fabric, which is a, yeah, embroidered, yeah, a broderie on glaze. Um, it's a nice like wrinkly, crinkly uh, cream cotton that I picked up at a market last year. And I decided that I'm going to hack the Wren again. Um, it is, I think it's like my best fitting top pattern. So 
I am just kind of running with it and making some changes. So I'm going to hack the scoop neck to be a square neck. So I'll have to play around a little bit with how I work out the facing, but I've been really excited about this project. This was, this fabric was in my March or maybe my February plans. Like it's definitely been on my mind as something that I really want to use up for the coming like spring summer months. So it's definitely been on my mind and I'm feeling really excited about doing a square neck Ren blouse. So that is option one. Option two is this um, viscose twill fabric that I've had in my stash for ages. Um, I actually just ordered some more of it in a couple different colorways to make a couple dresses. Um, this viscose twill is definitely on the lighter side. What I like about it is that it is opaque. Um, yeah, so I like that it does have a nice heavier feel, but it's not like a viscose twill that you would want to make like trousers out of, but for dresses and blouses, it's really great. So I've had this in my stash forever from NN Stoffen, and I have really been wanting to make a patina blouse from Friday Pattern Company. I think this color will be really cute with that nice pointy collar, and I want to go for the short sleeve version as kind of like a relaxed blouse moving into the spring and summer. I think it'll be really, really cute with like a denim skirt which I don't currently have in my wardrobe, but I really need a new one because I wore the one that I made last year. Like I wore it so, so much. It doesn't fit me anymore, but I think this would be really, really cute as a patina blouse in that combination. So that is option two. Option three, I don't have the fabric for. It's sitting in my cart online and I will put in a picture. <laughs> um, so obviously the like, better way to go would be to use what's in my stash, use what I have right here. But I might, I might bend and give in to getting this gorgeous fabric. It is a cotton, or I think it is a, I don't remember which it is. It's either mostly cotton with a bit of linen or it's mostly linen with a bit of cotton. It's a mix, it's a blend, but I really love this like heathery color. I think it's so, so pretty. And I really, I'm really, really into like that window pane check. Um, I think it's kind of a, I love a gingham. I love a gingham and I love a plaid, but I think the window pane is like just a little bit cleaner and a little kind of more elevated, a little more modern. So I'm really loving this type of print and I think this color combination is so pretty and I really really want a Helmy blouse made up in this I think with that Peter Pan collar yeah like the window pane print will kind of like balance like the vintage vibes of the Peter Pan collar so when I when I was testing the Helmy blouse I was looking everywhere for a fabric like this and I didn't find it, so I just like pulled a fabric from my stash. It happened to be kind of like a leftover. I had the right amount. And like, it's it's nice, I like it. Um, but this is like exactly what I was looking for and I couldn't find it anywhere. And then, you know, now that I've done that, I go on Self Made, which is like the one fabric store online that I didn't check. And they have so many of these window pane prints and they're gorgeous. So if you're looking for a window pane print, head over to Self Made. They have a ton in like several different substrates. They're great. Um, so yeah, I really, this like vision of this Helmy blouse is like locked into my brain. I think I will make it at some point, but it is probably like the smarter choice to just like sew what I have for now, but we'll see. The next one that I'm really, really excited about is Sew Recreate the Look. Um, this is a challenge that has been happening, I think every year, I think this is the third year, I wanna say, I'm, I might be wrong, um, but it is hosted by Jen and Charlene, and they do such a great job of kind of facilitating how to find inspiration and pull like patterns and fabrics to recreate the look. It's in the name, it does what it says on the tin, but it's a really, really fun challenge and I have actually taken like their formula um, 
yeah, and used it like throughout my making last year, long after like the challenge was over. So I'm really excited to participate this year. Um, so I have a couple of options. Option number one is um, this dress that I saw from They Are Sam. I found They Are Sam from um, initially like through the sewing community. They don't do a ton of sewing. I mean, their, their whole thing is more like poetry and writing and I absolutely love their work. It has been so good for me. I highly recommend signing up for their um, newsletter. It's called Healing Field Notes. There's always something like, I don't, I'm not even sure how to describe it. It's like, it, there's always something like juicy and really good, but also like it just feels like balm for the soul. So I, hi I highly recommend going and following They Are Sam. Um, their style is amazing. Like all the outfit inspiration, um, especially for like non-binary fashion. Um, so, so cool. Highly recommend. They had this dress and I have been obsessed with this color. Now I brought in a top that I made last year in this color and I had enough to make a dress. I got this fabric um, from Minerva last year as the as a brand ambassador, but I chickened out and I thought that like a dress would be too much. So I decided to make a cohort set using um, this Hannah tank and then I made a pair of Pietra pants thinking that I probably like wouldn't wear them together. I ended up loving them together. I love this color. It is like such a great color for me. I often feel, I don't feel great in bright colors most of the time, but this one is like the perfect balance of like, it's got kind of like a mustardy undertone. So it feels like a bit more grounded and earthy. And yes, yeah, so I'm just like obsessed with this lime color and have determined that this year I really need to make a dress. So I have ordered some samples because I do feel like it is kind of a dangerous <laughs> one. Like if it's like too yellow or too green, it could get like a little neon-y. So I have found a viscose twill and a viscose satin that I've ordered samples of. And I'm thinking about using the Sophia dress from Victory Pattern Company to recreate like something like Sam's dress. I'm not gonna do, theirs has like ribbon straps, which are very cute, not conducive for me to go braless. That's, that's not, it's not for me. So I really like that um, the Victory Sophia dress has an option for a nice thick strap with their sleeves, I think I've said this before that like I love the shirred dress look but often the like pinned on sleeves that are like way out here like those are just never going to work for me so the fact that it has a um, a nice little inset is gonna yeah I think that's gonna really work for me so I just got the pattern the other day and I'm really excited about that one now I haven't ordered the fabric because again like with the Helmy blouse I'm like I could, I have other options. I could use what I have, but I also know that like it's in my mind, it's in my color palette for my um, design your wardrobe, this like nice limey green color. So it is something that I'm on the lookout for anyway. And so if it happens to fit into this month of sewing challenges, like I could just get ahead of it and just like go for it now but it's gonna depend for one on the samples like if the color is right for me and b like i kind of need to like sit down with with my budget and with my values and really decide like if spending more money even though i think the idea is perfect and beautiful is that like the right thing for me right now so it's on the table but it's kind of on pause so that's idea number one. Idea number two comes also from a like 
Instagram person. Um, she's a full-time influencer. Uh, Marielle Elizabeth is uh, focuses on ethical plus size clothing and again highly recommend you give her a follow over there. Um, she also has a really great Patreon um, that I've been a part of like in and out. Um, it's largely about shopping ready to wear but there's also tons of great like sustainability tips for caring for clothes. Um, lots of great resources if you are looking to shop ethically. Anyway, this dress, well, she has a couple of dresses kind of in this vibe, and but this particular like photo shoot has been burned into my brain for like ages. Um, I think it's a couple of years old. Yeah, it's a shirred bodice. Again, um, it's a maxi dress with really nice sleeves, and then she's styled it with really cute black boots and then this like long, I mean, you're seeing it now. It seems silly for me too keep explaining it, but this like long rope necklace, um, like it's just a straight piece that you like wrap around twice and then it's got these nice tassels. If I go for this look, I do want to recreate some kind of like choker moment. I don't think I'll go for that like long skinny situation. Um, it also kind of freaks me out. Like I would get it caught on something and like, ugh, cause I'm very clumsy. So I probably won't go like that, but I do want to kind of experiment with acquiring. I don't know if I'll make it, but I'll shop around. Maybe I'll end up making something, some kind of accessory that has that like fringe element or like a choker. Um, yeah, it's something that's been on my radar for a while, you know, especially having grown up in the early 2000s when we all had like those uh, little like stretchy ones. Um, anyway, I think this fabric would be really great for it. I've had it hanging up and washed to make a Adriana dress from Friday Pattern Company, but I think that I'm going to abandon that plan and go again for the Sophia dress, um, by Victory Pattern. I think that this print will do what I want for shearing for having a sheared bodice. My thing about a sheared bodice dress is that I don't really like when there's a big print and then it like all squishes up. So then you have the same print, but like, yeah, one is like all narrowed and then the skirt isn't. So I think that this kind of like smaller ditzy print will work a bit better for what I have in my mind for what I would like. I also have a dark green hat that I think would kind of like complete the look and um, yeah, pull out some of the dark green that's in the print. So I think I'd be really happy with this option, which again is kind of why like maybe I shouldn't go out and buy something. But at the same time, what I like about doing the bright green is that it's in my summer color palette, it would definitely be something like moving forward into the season that we're going into. Whereas I think this make would be like a little bit more fall esque. And like I have talked about, I'm not, I'm a bit worried about making things too far in advance because my body is fluctuating so much at the moment. So I think I'd be really happy with this make, but I'm not sure that I'll go for it like for practical reasons. So that is idea number two, or I guess like, I guess it's the same pattern and kind of the same idea. So like idea one B, one A, one B. Um, and then over here I have two looks inspired by my favoritely dressed um, TV character, which is Judy Hale from Dead to Me. Um, I actually started following the pattern, or no, not pattern designer, the costume designer for that show. And she also does Poker Face, which I haven't seen yet because it's not available for streaming over here. But I like everything that I have seen from that show. Natasha Leone looks so freaking good, and I want every single one of her outfits. So I feel like I couldn't really do like a recreate the look for that stuff. Um, I'll put a link below so you can like 
flip through that if that is your jam, but it is like, oh, it's so good. And a lot of those pieces, like if I were to go that route, I wouldn't be able to make in a month. So I'm sticking with Judy Hale, old favorite. Um, yeah. So she has a lot of like 70s boho California-esque um, vibes in with her character. So I have picked a couple of fabrics from my stash that I am thinking would work really well. So this one is definitely like reminiscent of some of her like wrap dresses or like peasant style dresses. So I think I could do something like that with this. This again though kind of falls into, we're looking at really like dark colors and as much as I think that this would make a really gorgeous like seamwork Meg dress if I went the like peasant route or I could go for, I mean basically like any midi length wrap dress would, um, would definitely emulate a, a lot of the dresses that Judy Hale's character wears, or Linda Cardellini's is the actress um, that she wears for the show. But again, it's really dark and kind of feels a bit more fall to me. So it would be gorgeous and I would love it. And yeah, this fabric has kind of been on my radar to do that kind of thing with um, since I bought it like a year ago. So it might just be one that I like kind of take with me you know, I'll keep the inspiration, but maybe not do it for this challenge this time around. But that's that one. And then the second Judy Hale look that I really like is that she kind of has, I would say there's like three outfit formulas for her character. So there's like blouse and denim skirt, stripy t-shirt and denim skirt, and then like boho-y dresses. So one of the blouses she wears, I think like in the, I want to say in the first season, I have, I've only watched the show once, but I've like followed the designer like forever. So she wears, um, kind of like a novelty print blouse. I think it had like, there's one where it had like lips on it. There's another that's polka dot. And so I've pulled this little fox print viscose that I've had for a couple of years. It was on my make nine last year and I didn't get to it. But so that would be the foxes on the top as kind of like a fun novelty print and then do a stretch denim skirt on the bottom. Like I said, I had, I had two denim skirts last summer and I basically wore them. I wore each of them at least once a week, sometimes more than that, but they don't fit me right now. And it has left like a massive gap in my wardrobe because I definitely like leaned on them. So I have this fabric from my stash. It's a little bit darker than I would want, again, like for spring and summer, but I might, I don't know, maybe I'll experiment with doing some like sand washing or um, I don't know that I'd wanna go as far as like bleaching, but well, maybe, maybe, we'll see. Um, this is a mystery stretch denim that I have had for years, like, yeah, almost five years, almost five years. It's been in my stash. And I think the quality is probably not like the best, but given that I really need a denim skirt in my wardrobe and I happen to have this on hand, I'm thinking I might go for this one. The last challenge that I am going to be participating in this month is the Sew so Selfless April 23. That's it, right? Selfless Sew so April 23. That's what my note says. Um, it is hosted by Crystal, Adele, and Claire, and yeah, the rules are basically sew something that's not for you, and yeah, I think we have to post it on the 30th. Again, I'm going to link the details below, because as I'm saying that, I'm not actually sure if what I'm saying is right. So I think this is a really good opportunity to kind of kick me in the butt. I recently reorganize my fabric stash. I'm like getting distracted looking at it over there. Um, and I realized like, I have a lot of kid fabrics or like either things that I have bought to sew for my kiddo or things that are like Jersey remnants, um, things that I've saved so that I could make her, you know, t-shirts, leggings, 
stuff like that. Um, and I like haven't been doing it. I just don't really like to. Um, yeah, I was like fiddly with like the tiny armhole. I mean, she's five now, so it is like better than sewing baby clothes. I know people really love to sew baby clothes. I, it's not for me. Um, but she's five now and I should really just like, yeah, I needed the kick in the butt. She does need new clothes. Like right now she's just gone through an overdue growth spurt. So I pulled some fabrics or well, actually two of them she pulled and she decided. Um, the first one is this one. Um, I got it from a friend's D stash and I kind of wasn't sure what to do with it. And so I had it like out cause I was sort of just like mulling it over and Ember saw it and she was like, oh, mom. What is that? Do you, is that stuff to make something? And I was like, yeah, it's fabric. And she's like, do you, do you have enough that you would have like some leftover to make me something? And I was like, sure thing. Like, yeah, what do you want? And she's like, can it be a dress? Can you make me a dress from that with, with the, with the glitters on it? And it's yellow. Like she was so like, her eyes were like this big. So and that was like a month ago. So I really want to get something made up for her in this. Um, one of my favorite patterns is the Chalk and Notch Wren dress. I made one for her a couple of years ago. Um, so I will probably be tracing that off and using it. Um, it is a slightly more involved make, especially in like small scale, but um, I know she would really, really love that. And it would kind of be a bit more transitional than like an easier like tank dress or something. So that's probably what this is going to be. We'll see if I get it done at the end of April or not, but that's option number one. Option number two is this uh, green French Terry, which is one that I actually bought to make something for her. Um, this green is like a really good color on her and um, matches a lot of things that she has. What she really needs right now is like cardigans and things that she can like layer yeah sweaters that she can layer on and off especially going into the spring now i haven't had like a solid look around but i am looking for cardigan suggestions that will work for french terry so if you know of any um let me know this week i'm probably going to have a look um i know love notions and um Patterns for Pirates tend to do a lot of like kid knit patterns. So I'm probably going to start there. But if you have like a tried and true kid cardigan, definitely let me know because I would love any recommendations for this one. And then this last one I bought a couple years ago and I was thinking that I would make like a little matchy set for me and M, but I think it is too frilly for me, but she still loves it. So I'm considering, yeah, again, either the Chalk and Notch Wren or possibly um, go like full on summer and do the Chalk and Notch Mini Marcel, which I have also made for her a bunch of times and she absolutely loves it. Um, so those are, these are my options for her. So those are my options for April. Um, I'm really excited to see what I end up going with. Um, I was kind of laughing to myself about this idea that I like wasn't gonna make April plans and maybe like wasn't gonna sew very much in April and now like I have a whole stack of, I mean, really, I have a stack of things mentally in my, that I want to be sewing at all times, <laughs> but I did end up making, you know, somewhat, they're not, they're not formal plans, but they're, they're options. It's a menu I could choose from. Um, but most of them really do align with like either my make nine um, with a shirt dress is on there, an A-line skirt is on there, a blouse, like there's a lot of it that aligns either with that or with what I'm working on in um, Design Your Wardrobe, which I think I'll have a video about that maybe next week or the week after. Um, it's been a really fun process and I'm really excited for how that is going. Um, yeah, and then also like stash busting, like I need to just get going on making some things for my kid and get through like all of the fabric that I have set aside for her and like stop buying like kid printed jersey because I'm just not sewing at the rate that I've been 
buying it. So it was, that was a good lesson, but now I need to like do the work and actually make the things. So again, I'm excited. I think that these sewing challenges, like, again, I had FOMO last, last month, but that's not what they're about. Like it's not, um, it's not meant to be any kind of pressure to join in, um, but it can be a really great way to either like give some direction to your making to meet some other sewists and like engage with the community. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm also really excited to actually get to some sewing. I personally have had a weird couple of weeks um, and my mental health has been affected. We will say that. And so I'm really excited to get some projects cut out, get some great music on and like just kind of spend some time. Um, yeah, with that with myself. So really excited to get into that this week. And I would love to know from you guys um, if you're taking part in any of these challenges or if you're like, nope, that's not for me. You know, maybe it's overwhelming or maybe you've got other plans that you are working on tell me all about them because I love that stuff. Um, yeah, so I would love to know what you're sewing in April or what your like sewing goals are. Um, or if you're just like maybe taking April to, it, it's a busy month. Like I know we've got spring break and everything coming up. So yeah, if you're just relaxing and resting, that's awesome too. But that's all for me today. I think it's time for me to go pick up my kiddo. So I will see you later. And until then, happy making. Bye.